So today on the Greater Things podcast, we're going not only just podcast, but also YouTube this time. I'm hanging out with a, such a good friend of mine, Courtney Keck. How are you doing? Hey, Matt. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing really well. You got a new addition to your home today. Are you talking about the drums? The drums, right? Yes. Yes, we did get a new addition to the to the home. <laughs> We will see how this goes. <laughs> we were debating where to set up uh, this this new drum set. And um, so they're inside the house at the present moment. We'll see if it continues. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Patricia and I, we know uh, exactly, exactly. Uh, with Zach having been many years down the track of playing drums, but his mm -hmm. first kit um, was in the garage of our house, much to the annoyance of... <laughs> all of our neighbors everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to Trish and no I. it's great no it's great it's been great to hear them all take turns and have fun going yep. crazy and being children so that's a good thing well one of the things we did in the years that are to come maybe for your son with this is that we transitioned from a full kit to an electronic kit for home mm-hmm mm Okay, I will take notes. <laughs> <laughs> you still you still hear the tapping, um, but mm -hmm. you're not, uh, the whole suburb doesn't hear the tapping. To all of it, yes. <laughs> very good. Very, very I, good. I love that you guys are like releasing your kids to play instruments. Mm -hmm. How does that feel for yeah. you as a parent to be doing that? It's great. Um you know, I played cello all through school and Scott was in the band, played saxophone. And so music was a part of our education and part of our lives. And I always loved it because I knew that I could count on, you know, one class session a day being something that I knew what was coming, you know, every year. So there was a constancy in that, but also a growth in it. And I loved playing with the group. Um, so to get them just the opportunity to do something that they, uh, want to do that they are enjoying learning. Um, that's always fun to get to see that. And it's, it's fun to hear the Lord speak things about your kids before they're born and then see them happen. That's always a treat. So we've gotten the joy of getting to see some of that just develop and blossom. And so, yeah, music is, is near and dear to our hearts. We are a musical family, so it's fun. You would be one of the very few parents on the planet that would have prophesied over their son that they would be playing drums. Well, I don't know that specifically, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a rhythm in, in everything. And there's, um, you know, I, when I see the drums, I see a role, uh, um, pointing towards leadership and that I see for sure. Yeah. You know, they set the tone, they set the rhythm and set the pace. So. Most definitely that. In my early days of running prophetic mentoring, when I did it inside the, the room, like in person rather than online, mm -hmm. I would often take people uh, that I was training into the, the church building where we do worship. And I would invite them to go and stand where they felt comfortable mm -hmm. to stand. And so often people would go to the drums. They would, mm -hmm. even if they could not beat time with a stick, so to speak. Um, <laughs> That's one of our phrases. I don't know if that's one you use in the States. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Um, mm -hmm. But they would go and stand there. And I was I would talk to them about them finding the rhythm uh, in the, the community, in the family, or even within their own lives. And listening to you guys talk or even that your son's going to be playing drums, there's something about that. that there's a drawing. There's a there's a presence on these kinds of statements for our kids that often they lose in those early years and they don't go back to them. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What do you mean? Tell me a little bit more about statements that they, they lose. Did you say that again for me? Well, see, often, often kids, uh, well, I, I learned to play guitar when I was a kid mm -hmm. and then I just dropped it. I let it go. Um, okay. and, it, and it was years before, I came back into playing it and I picked it up of my own volition back then. But so often with kids, what we're finding, I guess, 
is that when they leave school, they don't have time to do these things anymore and they go off and do other things and they lose that. And what I've found so often is people come back to those places in the spirit. They're looking Mm -hmm. for the rhythm. They go, oh, gee, I wished I had played drums when I was a kid or I wished I had played something when I was a kid. Um, How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely been my, unfortunately, been my journey. I played for a while and then when I went into college, it's, you know, if you want to be a music major, that has to be at least here. That was a lot of everything that you did. And that wasn't my major. So I didn't get to, I didn't keep playing just for fun. Cause you know, my favorite part of playing wasn't playing by myself. It was playing with a group. Um, but I think that there's definitely times where that happens. And I've, I've been thinking about that a little bit lately too, just in terms of, um, when we get older, the things that we don't do anymore in terms of play or joy or just relaxing that type of thing. And so I think for me, it kind of falls along that line, that vein as well, that we seem to put down things that, um, we actually kind of need, you know, just as humans. Um, I was looking at, we had a bounce house for one of the kids the other day, cause it was their birthday. And, you know, there's like weight limits and all this other stuff on it. And I thought like, what would it look like if we did stuff like that for adults? You know, Mm -hmm. if we had, and I'm sure they have trampoline parks or whatever, but what if we just had things at our house that were for adults that we could play, play on too? Does that make sense? I don't mean not to sound too trivial or whatever, but, um, I think that that's kind of a common thing. It's not, I don't think it's just music. I think there's a lot of things that we stop doing. Yeah, I think play is definitely one of those things. And in my opinion, too, like creativity uh, flows very powerfully when joy is on the table. When mm-hmm. uh, So if you have to drive a child to learn an instrument, uh, mm-hmm. I know when I was in that place, it took all the fun out of actually playing <laughs> yeah. that instrument. And so, yeah. which is why I put it down in the first place, because mm. the songs I was playing back then, the style of playing uh, as a kid, was you're just Eric? going, no, nah. well, that, mm. was the, that was the seventies, right? And Eric Clapton was playing guitar. <laughs> um, and here am I playing Camp Down Races. Do you know that tune? Mm-mm. It doesn't sound great though. I'll be honest with you. It's, I'm not going to sing it for you. It's part of my early childhood trauma. don't want to trigger you there (laughs) but i think this is even part of what we're chatting a little bit around today because when i asked you earlier what do you reckon god's on about at the moment for me it's creativity Mm. and uh, i just believe we're in a season of releasing our creative abilities and if we can be doing it in our children and just maintaining that level of we want this to be a joy thing we don't want this Mm -hmm. to be a chore uh, as to what will flow when we start using creativity as a a means of doing life how do you feel Mm -hmm. about that well it's good and I think that I think that creativity you're going to there's some prerequisites in order for us to get to the place where we feel like we can be creative um you know, there's a, an element of freedom involved in that. Um, so if you're struggling with that, that might be an issue. Um, there's also just elements of, you know, when you're being creative, there's no mistakes. It's not like you can do it wrong. Hmm. So, you know, I think about the times in the past where the Lord's used that really powerfully to help me move into some things. Um, and then what was the dominant thing that was warring with that at the time or what had to be set aside at the time in order to be able to move into that freedom to be creative. And a lot of it's that, um, you know, there's a religious mindset there that gets pulled up and out. If it's there, if it's hanging around, um, perfectionism, all those, you know, sticky things, um, you kind of get to practice putting that aside and moving apart from it. If that's something that's kind of been ingrained or that's something that you struggle with or you're used to, creativity is a really beautiful way to break into that place of freedom. Um, But also 
you know, opening up your imagination to think things differently, look at things from a different angle. So I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of that. And I'm also one of those people that like, I will rearrange a room just for a good dopamine hit, you know, <laughs> like mm. if I need, if I'm feeling flat and I feel like things are just not moving and, and not working, what, what can I do here? What can I do to kind of rearrange something and throw a different look in there? So I'm a big fan of that for sure. I think it's great. I think it's definitely one of those avenues to, you know, the whole Ephesians 3.20 thing, where if the Lord's promising to do above and beyond what we can think or imagine, then we need to be thinking and imagining some pretty awesome things so that he has something to, ex to exceed. So yeah, there's a lot in that. Yeah. And I think even as one of the phrases you there said there was opening up my imagination. Has that been a natural thing for you to do? No. I mean, yeah, it has. I should, shouldn't say that. It has definitely. I'm one of those people that has a very active imagination, but I'm also one where I have to watch where it's going. Like I have to pay attention to the things that I'm imagining or thinking. And it's a really good way of sort of me taking the temperature of what's going on for me internally, but then also in the spirit. So I pay attention probably pretty closely to the things that I imagine. Now, if there's a specific situation that's really challenging that the Lord's like, I want you to be thinking about this in a different way, then that might be harder. Like I may have to tell him, <laughs> I need you to give me, give me a boost here. Like, give me something to start off with or whatever. So it really gets to be a place of partnership with him for sure too. Can you explain to me the process of using your imagination? Is that a big, too big a question to start, kick off on? Too big a question. Give me, <laughs> narrow, narrow it a little bit for me. <laughs> I think at times, particularly in churches, using your imagination, uh, I know when I grew up, they were quite um, hesitant. Mm -hmm. Maybe even when I grew up, wasn't even a thing. Mm -hmm. Here's what you had to believe. Here's what you could sing. Here's what you could preach. All of that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. It wasn't until probably the last dozen or so years of my life that imagination became a place of, well, let's just give this a crack and let's see where yeah. we go with right. it. And I know for me, it took me a while to trust it. Mm -hmm. And then how did I access those places? Because uh, I think long ago, I just believed that I couldn't use my imagination to pray. I couldn't use my imagination to see what God might be up to or to prophesy. And so there was a, a brick by brick dismantling of some of that belief internally for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but you've just described yourself as being really creative and really, because uh, you're active, your imagination is very activated. Mm -hmm. So has this been an easy step for you to do this sort of stuff or challenging? Well, no, because you don't, we're not taught that this is actually a place or a thing that we can engage at our will with the Lord. Hmm. Um, we're not taught that like most of the time we're taught that it's evil or it's vain or it's something really bad. Um, but there's a quote that I really love by Andrew Womack. And he says, imagination is just your ability to picture something with your heart that you can't see in that moment with your eyes. So if there's something that you and the Lord are praying for, or, you know, that he has asked you um, to pray about or whatever, the way that I look at it, as far as imagination goes, it's I'm praying with pictures, hmm. not necessarily with words, um, which I do think is another way that we can pray. Um, you and I've talked about that before, but the Hebrew word for imagination is the word yet, sir, Y E T S E R. And it means conception. It has multiple meanings, but one of the meanings is conception. And so, um, it's your spiritual womb. It's where we conceive things. It's where we engage with the Lord in that place. Um, so for me, I think that our imagination really plays that role in creating with the mm -hmm. Lord and in, in prayer. But it's just, um, I think it's sort of the way that we're made when we're made in his image. So, you know, sometimes people can get a little nervous about this because I think it's a little too new age. Um, and I actually think the new age is just picked up on 
what it looks like to be created in the image of creating God. Mm. So um, I think they pick up on things that they can notice. They do it in, in sports psychology and all kinds of stuff. They picture themselves doing something over and over and over again. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different elements that are involved in that map, but I think that it's, it's just another way for us to engage with the Holy spirit. And I know when we talk about dreams, when you and I talk about dreams, that's, this is sort of another kind of interlocking component with that, especially when we talk about nightmares or we're talking about children. Mm. Um, I have four of them. They have our genes for dreaming. So we have big dreams in our house and that's a good thing. Um, but sometimes it's kind of an intense thing. Um, it made me so happy the other day. I went, uh, spent some time with my son and he was telling me, mom, I had this really intense dream and this happened and this happened. And he said, and I sat on my bed and I did what, you know, you've showed me how to do, which is I asked Jesus to come into the dream. And I was just like internally, like, you know, fist pumping the whole time. Like, yes, because now this has become a place for him to engage with Jesus that he's, you know, very aware of, um, so he said, I did, and I saw him come in and he took care of it and all this stuff. And we still talked through it together, but I do think their imagination, you know, and our dream space, those are territories. And so we get to rule and reign in that space as well. So if we're doing it with the Holy spirit, we're doing it with Jesus and he's actively in it. And I think it's a really powerful place of creating and connecting. Yeah. Did that answer your question? <laughs> I feel like I ask you that every time we do one of these, did that answer your question? (laughs) One of the joys of having a conversation with you is that um, they lead to places and help us understand, because again, the things that you share, as we've just heard, this is not theory. This is actually happening inside of your own home. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the reasons why um, you're such a, a strong voice in the kingdom of God mm. because you take what you know, not just what you believe, but what you know. And that, what I say is the difference in that is that we can talk about what we believe but have no application inside of our world and our life. And as a pastor, I was guilty of doing that for a number of years of preaching and declaring things that internally I thought if anyone asked me anything on this, it's going to be like a deck of cards that comes tumbling down. Mm. Um, and the thing that I love about what you've just said is, hey, here's something I've learned. I've now applied it and I'm seeing a generational impact from it. And internally you're doing cartwheels as your son is going. I've actually yeah. connected with Christ inside mm-hmm. of my dream space, which he is taking dominion mm-hmm. over. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And it's such a joy. And it's not to say that it's always flawless for me. Like there's been times where I'm praying for something and my natural eyes have seen some difficult stuff. And it really is, a, you know, like trying to get the wheels turning in the opposite direction of picturing and praying and stepping through something different can be really hard. So that's one area where I've asked the Lord, you know, when it's, when it's tough like that, I'm like, you have to help me, give me an image, give me something. Um, and sometimes it's just kind of clunky to start out with and that's okay too. Um, so yeah, I definitely think it's the space, it's territory and it's something that gets, it's fought for, you know, like we, whenever we have terrible, we imagine something absolutely terrible happening we don't ever, um, we don't ever doubt that we know that that's real. And it's like, we have the faith to believe that that's this horrible thing. Um, almost more than we have the faith to believe in, in a good imagination. You know, we want to like super scrutinize that like, Oh, was that just me? Or was that the Holy spirit? You know, <laughs> we put it under this really intense microscope instead of accepting it for what it is and testing it with the Lord or asking him to confirm things. So I just think that our imagination is a really contested space, but I think it's really a uh, beautiful, uh, it's because it's powerful. It's part of our design. Yeah. Yeah. You dropped a Aussie phrase in there. 
It's very proud mm-hmm. of you. Thank clunky. you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when something's clunky, Courtney, what is it? It's just not working great. <laughs> there it's we go. Like squeaky wheels, you know, we need some oil or it's just awkward. How about that? <laughs> We're slowly making you an Aussie. I don't know. It's going to be kind of hard to do that. (laughs) (laughs) So part of the joy of using it, your imagination, and I loved how you've linked that with conception, the spiritual Mm -hmm. womb, where so we can actually join in the creative process Mm -hmm. with God. Because like you also said, we can actually imagine worst case scenarios. And Mm -hmm. are we surprised when those worst case scenarios actually happen? Actually happen. Yep. After we've literally imagined them sat there meditating on it for the last 30 minutes or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Well, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about what you fear the most actually comes to bear um, Mm -hmm. because your fear is the language that keeps playing out in front of you. And often our words can take us down those, those Mm -hmm. um, pathways of the mind. And before you know it, we're playing out our greatest fears. Now you and I both know that God's greatest love is far superior than our greatest fear. Why is it we so often gravitate towards fear rather than love in this spiritual womb that you talk about? Mm, I don't know, friend. I don't know if it's because we, you know, it's like when spiritual warfare takes so much focus on the enemy and not as much focus on the Lord. I don't know if it's because that's what we've been taught. Um, I don't know if it's because it's easier. (laughs) Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I think it's probably a combination of things. Um, But I think the more that we begin to understand the nature of the Father, the more we meditate on his heart for us, what he wants to see happen for us, and just the beauty of Jesus. I think that some of those things become easier but it's definitely getting us to that place where we just become aware of what it is we're meditating and thinking on and imagining. Um, Because that's the first step, becoming aware of what's playing through your mind. Uh, At least it was for me. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And this is where I think when you tapped on before the concept of new age movement, Mm -hmm. often people's thought process around church and God is without power is without this creative ability. And so they go hunting for those areas of our world where these things are actually manifesting. And Mm -hmm. so often we found in the 70s and 80s here in Australia that the New Age movement would talk about dreams. They would talk about visions. And um, all of us over here started going, oh, that's evil, that's evil, that's evil. Mm -hmm. And I fully get why they said that. But so much of what I've found as a church, we've given away that right and access to understanding how God speaks in these ways. Like, you know, in Acts 2, where it says in the last days, there are going to be dreams and visions, old and young men and women are going to prophesy mm-hmm. all those beautiful phrases. If we don't listen to dreams and visions, we're actually saying to God of the New Testament, you know what, we actually don't want you to talk that way to us. Don't want to hear you. Yeah. And I know that sounds harsh, but that's scripture just playing yeah. out in front of us and so you're leaning beyond those fears is it new age and you're leaning in to the love of the father uh, that is there that is infinitely greater infinitely safer and you're saying to him here's an imagination that i have that you've given to me and created within me i want to use this with you is that am i hearing that right Mm -hmm. absolutely are and i'm one of those people that believes that the Bible, the word of God is meant to be experienced. Hmm. And that's one of the ways that we experience the heart of the father. We experience his presence in some of these ways. Um, I know you've had it happen to you before where you're reading a scripture and it just hits you like a ton of bricks and you can feel it go through your body. It lights you up and you know that the Holy Spirit is breathing on that word in particular for that for you for that moment or whatever it is that you've been praying about, that he's bringing revelation, you know, the word is alive. And I think that when we start 
seeing the father's heart to want to connect with us, these different ways of our imagination, our dreams and visions, those will become normal again. This is the normal way that the Holy Spirit speaks. This is the normal way for the father to connect with the hearts of his children. Um, you know, it's almost like sometimes in the, in some, in some churches we're, we're taught or they're taught that, you know, uh, signs, wonders, and miracles, that those things have ceased. Hmm. Well, if you're told that they're not there anymore, are you going to be looking for them? Are you going to be embracing them? Are you going to be holding faith that he's going to move in that way for you or with you? And are you even preaching the same gospel that was preached in the Bible? Hmm. Because almost everywhere I've looked lately when I've been reading in Acts, signs, wonders, miracles, those things confirm the word Hmm. that's being preached. So that's when I start to wonder, like I start to step back, like just like we did with imagination, we start to go back a little bit further and a little bit further. Where have we seen this in the word? Who does it belong to? Where did it originate from? Um, And I just think, like you said earlier, it's part of our design. It's part of his design and it's part of how he wants to speak to us. But if we're told he's not doing that or he doesn't, he's not in that then are we going to be looking for it or embracing it and holding on to it? Yeah. I don't know. Especially if at times we're called, we're told that those things are evil. If they're Mm -hmm. evil, we won't go. And we stay away from them. Yep. Yeah. See the language. And I know you and I've talked about this before of signs, wonders and miracles. Our world seems to have a lens as to what that has to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You've just explained one with your son who has had an interaction with Jesus in a dream space Mm -hmm. that has connected him to Jesus' heart. Could be the greatest sign, wonder, or miracle I've heard today. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I think it's wonderful. And I think when we start learning to to look for these things it even makes faith grow that there's going to be more mm. does that make sense yes and they start they start it's like you it's like you you've taught us when we talk about dreams it's like what we give value to we see more of yep. um when we give value to our dreams we we encounter more of them we remember more of them most of the time we hold on to them we write them down it becomes an avenue that we strengthen when we have value for it so i think that the more that we look for those, the more that we believe and we're taught, he wants to connect with you. And these are the powerful ways in which he does it, but he's not limited to just this, but yes, this, mm. um, I just think it's, I think it's a contagious type thing, but I think it gives room for faith and our own desire to want to connect back with the Lord. What would you say to someone who said to you that thing with your son wasn't a sign, wonder or miracle? That's a sad place to live. Yeah. And that's okay for that to be their opinion, but it's not mine. <laughs> it's not been yeah. my, the way that I've encountered the Lord. So, you know, I don't know. I just think that, um, and to Matt, I think he's so kind because I remember asking, asking him for more. I want to see you more. I want to connect with you more and just, the ease at which that happened at times. I mean, there's ebbs and flows. Don't get me wrong. It's not 24 seven all the time. Um, but it's generally always there. And when I ask for it, he's been so kind to show up, but there are times where you do have to go looking. Yeah. You do have to sit and wait. I know you've had those times where it's like, I'm just going to sit and wait. And if I don't see something crazy or wild or have a vision, then I'm going to encounter him in the creation that I'm sitting around Mm. because he's just quiet and he's teaching me to be still and to rest for that moment and to just be at peace. So I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those people that thinks he's with us and he's, he's there all the time. Mm. So what's brewing for you in that place of spiritual womb, if I can use your phrase again? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um hmm. narrow the question a little bit for me <laughs> <laughs> so there's the th- always something brewing yeah this 
And I just know with you, you're always on the hunt for something of God mm, mm-hmm. wherever you are. It could be yeah. in, in the Bible, it could be in the garden, it could yeah. be in the family. Yeah. It could be on a license plate that drives past you. Mm-hmm. What's, what's happening big. for you in that place of inspiration of what the Spirit's doing? Yeah, so um, I had this thing happen back in December. Um, I woke up before we had a storm come through and it was strange because I woke up to hearing the wind hit the house. So I woke up and I started praying. Um, and I got up and around and the dog was, the dog was kind of whining. So I got up and I let the dog out, let her go to the bathroom, let her back in, go back to bed, tried to go back to sleep, you know, dogs whining again. Oh, she's fine. Get up. And I go and I open the door and I go to let her out and she won't go out. Hmm. She's just standing there looking at me. So I'm frustrated. I shut the door. I'm like, go back to bed, go get in your bed. You know, I fussed at the dog, um, shut her in her little crate thing, turned around, paused for just a moment. And I'm standing there. The lights go out. Then I see a flash. Then I hear a bang and there's no more electricity. The lights went out first. Then it was lightning. Then it was the thunder. Um, and I kind of laughed because I was like, well, I'm just going to stay on the couch because <laughs> here come the kids. <laughs> and so I turned around and I got the flashlight and uh, I sit down on the couch and they kind of trickled downstairs. And it was interesting because I remember before that happening, praying. And I remember saying, like, I prayed specifically about our electricity and it goes out like right after that. And I thought, Lord, what's going on? what's going on? So I just sat on the, on the couch and he was like, just be quiet, just be quiet and be still. So it was about an hour, hour and a half before the electricity came back on at that point, sent all the kids back to bed and still didn't really understand. Cause I knew it was something I knew he was speaking and saying something, but I didn't quite, I didn't hear anything at the time. So I go back to sleep. It was a couple of days later. Um, I don't know, Matt, it was a strange experience. I don't know if it was a vision. I don't know if it was a trance. I just remember I was thinking back to what had happened. And I, I, it's like, I went back in that place and I could see myself standing there, but then I could also see outside and I could see where the lightning struck. I could see it kind of make this dome. And it was like, I remember him speaking or giving an understanding that, that when he, when that happened, there was an element of time that he kind of came into. And he said, he said to me, your Kronos time or my, my Kairos time is now entering your Kronos time. Like these two things are, are meeting Mm. and I'm putting some things on track. And I remember you and I had talked about this before that beforehand, I was having all these dreams about like something's happening. And it was, it was around, I kept dreaming about March, but then I was having dreams. It was like, no, this has already happened back in November. Something has started. Something's going faster. And I was having visions of clocks spinning, you know, so there's a real, um, there's really something he's on right now, as far as time going goes where it's redeeming time. But I also really believe that we're in a, a moment where, um, he's stepping in and he's causing some things to come into alignment. He's causing some time to kind of slow up a little bit. So things can catch up, but also some things are coming up, coming forward, coming faster. So that's a lot to say that he's working in the realm of time, which we know he always is. Um, but there's been quite a bit on that. And he, he told me through that. He was like, just pay attention, pay attention to the things that you see in the skies, pay attention to what's going to be happening. And so it's, it's been one of those things where I have been paying a little more attention, but it's been interesting to see, like we've had a comet come close that we've been able to see that my son was by some miracle able to find in his telescope. So it's just little things like that where it happens. And I just feel the Lord like, Hey, pay attention. <laughs> I'm talking to you about some stuff. So that was, a, that was a whole mouthful, Matt, but I, I just really believe that there's a lot that he's doing right now in restoring and redeeming time. And in moving in recompense for a lot of people. Recompense. Mm -hmm. That's not a phrase we use Mm -mm. all that often. I like it though. Uh, Explain it to us. Well, you gave a better definition of it the other night. Uh, I think you said something along the lines of it being um, restoring what had been lost Mm. and then some. 
So there's whatever's been stolen or whatever has been lost is, is restored, but then you get a little like interest on it. But for me, whenever I think of recompense, I also think that there's a little element of vengeance in there, like the Lord's vengeance, <laughs> where he writes some things. Mm. And um, yeah. So like justice coming to bear. Yes, justice, absolutely. Yeah. Very much that. Well, see, for me, if I think like even globally, there is mm -hmm. a lot, lots going on in our world. Well, it has been obviously for a few years now of some of the stuff never before seen or mm -hmm. not in our lifetime, not in living memory, particularly with things like a pandemic. And then we have things that are happening um, in, in Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, we have earthquakes that are occurring yeah. in Turkey, Syria and uh, all around the world, really. And mm -hmm. we see all these things happening as far as, wow, this is really challenging for us. But you seem mm -hmm. to have a lens on finding things that God is doing for us. And so even in the concept of a lightning storm, a dog being scared, trying to find a flashlight, um, kids <laughs> coming downstairs, mm -hmm. um, all of that could be a point of going, oh my gosh, not tonight. I just want to go to sleep. hundred oh, yeah. percent. It's somewhere you've gone, God, what are you up to? Yeah. Well, and it was interesting too, because in those days that followed, I remember being kind of puzzled because my son at one point had asked me to, he was like, mom, you know, you said we can speak to the storm. Well, what happens? And I remember I had that same thought where I was like, Lord, I know that we've prayed about this before. So when we did lose electricity, and that may seem like not a big deal to someone. And I don't think, think that way all the time, but there was something in it, in my spirit that said, pay attention. It's not just a coincidence pay attention. So when I sat with that later and I asked the Lord about it, he told me to go to Psalm 29 and Psalm 29 is titled the glory God thunders. Hmm. Nothing negative came out of that experience other than I lost about an hour, hour and a half of sleep. Um, but the encounter that's come from that has been amazing for me. And I do think that when you said that we're focusing on the things that the Lord is doing for us. There's an element of relationship in that for me, in that when I let him be the Lord, I let him be who he wants to be to me. When I let him be father, that's delighting a part of his heart that he, he yearns to have fulfilled to be a father. Um, so when we allow him to be the glory God and we allow him to thunder, then there's going to be things that we will receive from him that we don't receive any other time. Um, it says in there, like proclaim his majesty. And it talks about awe and being in awe of his majesty. And that in particular, I do think is definitely something that he's on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, making space and time for wonder, making space and time for awe. That is definitely something that he's been speaking and asking me to do is sit in this place, just think on my glory. And, and that ties right in with imagination picturing it, soaking in it. What would I, what would it look like to see his glory or where would his, where's his glory resting in this one person or on this one person? What does that look like? Um, there's just such a relational connection for that. But for me, making time in that space for awe and majesty, it's not just a frilly woo woo thing that I'm doing at the time. I it, our, our body is engaged with it. Our mind and our imagination is engaged with it. And so it's a domino effect hmm. all the way down the line. You can feel your body relax or get, or, or become, you know, more awake if that's what it needs. But, um, all that to say, it's a multidimensional thing. And I think that this is definitely something that he's on for these days right now. Awe and majesty is another big one that I hear him saying right now. Yeah. I'm also hearing you say, because you're talking about a God who's present, not mm -hmm. just a God who's distant, but that awe and majesty and wonder. Because for me, the way you're talking about imagination, there's an extraordinary amount of wonder in what you're actually sitting with God in. That's the beauty of any relationship that grows, that you can sit down and say, hey, I've had a thought. Could we actually talk around this now? if the other person in the conversation is like, that's the wrong thought, 
then very quickly your imagination disappears like a breath of wind of of, of air right and yeah. the person goes wow i'd really love to talk about that mm. all of a sudden the place of communication becomes a much stronger place and the place of wondering becomes a thing that you're both doing this is my concept of walking with god this is what i love to do and listening to you mm-hmm. say that it's just like wow this is the place of presence this is knowing that god does connect with us at such an intimate and intricate level at times where he does want this conversation he does want us using the very thing that he placed within us to go for the wonder that is around him and in the wonder and I, I, I get this the most when I'm in creation, but the awe and majesty moments, they are extraordinary. And mm-hmm. I find it very easy to sit in those places of awe and wonder, but at the same time's presence when I'm in his creation. Mm-hmm. No, I love that too. And I was, I had a thought as you were speaking there too, like just thinking about being in creation and thinking about, um, like we sat outside the other day to watch a storm roll through and because that's kind of what you do here in Oklahoma. Um, But in that place of appreciating the simple of what we see as being simple, where sitting outside, listening to the wind, listening to the rain roll in, listening, watching if there's any lightning or thunder, watching that stuff roll in, that's so something beyond us. That's Mm. beyond what we have control over, but it's, it can be common. It's simple. But when we're connecting with him in that simple place of creation, like you were talking about, I think that that opens the door for even more. It's like it it causes us to even appreciate even more the awe and the wonder when we find it in those regular, what we think regular everyday things. Um, I hope that makes sense. It does. How does a mom of four who homeschools um, find those places? (laughs) <laughs> very carefully i don't know <laughs> i don't know they're they're not all the time things but um i think that being a mom of four and doing what i do has caused me to feel on a very intense level some days my need for it yeah cuz there are some days where i'm so overstimulated and so overdone overcooked whatever you want to call it that it's like i i have to go outside now and I'm going to sit outside and I'm going to be by myself for just long enough to catch my breath and sit on the ground or whatever it may be. Um, so I think it's actually taught me to go there more because I need it more. Yeah. With all the parents that are listening to this podcast and watching it on YouTube, Courtney, and I, tradition, I were there too. You feel like it's an absolute battlefield at times. And and can I say that some days my sitting outside will often look like me opening the door, sticking my face out the door into the cold to breathe in a couple drags of really cold air before I shut the door and it's back to work. So it's not <laughs> every day that I'm out there <laughs> on yep. this blanket enjoying whatever it is. There's days where it's like just grab a couple good drags of fresh air and then it's back back yep. into doing things. So yeah. Not always. Yeah. I, w- I wonder whether you'd be prepared to speak life into many parents out there that are just going, mm-hmm. I am barely hanging on to this thing. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that you are doing a good job. Mm. This is the hardest thing that you can do. Because many times in parenting, not only are you learning your child and all of their wonderful uh, ins and outs, but you're also having to relearn yourself. You're learning yourself as a parent, but you're also learning yourself as who you were as a child. So sometimes with many of us, there's things that we have to get, needs that we have to get met or things that we need to have healed So rarely is this experience from what I have walked so far, a nice, neat and tidy thing where I have a child and I understand exactly what to do. No problem, no self-doubt whatsoever. I execute and it goes off perfectly. Um, You're doing a good job. 
And I think the main thing that I'm learning that I'm in the process of learning right now is the importance of presence. The right or the wrongs, you know, we put a lot of focus on that. We want our kids to behave. We want our kids to do well. We want them to learn all of those things. And that's fine. But the most important thing that I'm learning and I'm learning to give myself as well as my kids is that place of presence. Do I always do that wonderfully? No, nobody does, but you're doing a good job because you're trying and you're paying attention and create space for yourself in there as well. Cause you can't, you can't give what you don't, you're not filling back up for you. Um, but yeah, doing a good job. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. It's so the way that we teach that, and you've heard me say this before, Courtney, that you prophesy often from what you testify to what mm -hmm. God has done. And so for everyone watching, what you've just listened to is a woman of God discover the faithfulness of God throughout the journey. And in that, she has discovered the need for healing self. Um, for me, it was also a healing marriage too. Like it wasn't just mm -hmm. me. I think, Courtney, when I we first had kids, everyone just expected you're going to do this thing well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep. Strange expectation. But you don't know. You have no idea what you're doing. Like, Correct. let's just be real. <laughs> <laughs> and if you say you do, I think you're lying. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Mostly just trial and error at this point, and you hope it turns out. Right. And everyone watching, we're just testifying right now, just testifying. But this is the the strength of this moment. The intentionality of the love that we carry will bring the healing that we're talking about. But it's very intentional, and in that intentionality is a space where great courage is uh, exerted. And for many parents who are listening and watching along. And this concept of great courage at times you feel like you've got very little in the tank for that mm -hmm. my word to you today is that the holy spirit is there mm -hmm. he is filling he is renewing he is transforming he is changing things that are there and uh, like courtney has just said the concept of right and wrong is starting to be replaced with the concept of what is life now we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We all at times have days that we wish we could redo, but there's other days where we go, wow, I wish this day would never end. I don't know what that's like with four young kids. I don't know if you've ever had a day, mm -hmm. please don't ever oh. end. <laughs> oh, oh, don't ever end or please God let this be over soon. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Yeah. We have, we have both. We have both for sure. Yeah. But these are the the moments as well, like in listening to you, Courtney, some of the greatest revelations I've listened to from you have been birthed, conceived, spiritual womb, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. in some of the toughest things that you've actually mm -hmm. walked through. And uh, I know that you've said to me at some point, I just need to shut down. I need to find my Bible. Yeah. I need to go and find a, Check a, out. a place on the cement where I can lie down and look at the stars and allow yourself into a place of it's nearly like that reboot or mm -hmm. okay let's just start thinking again about the presence of the moment that we're in mm -hmm. and go okay god what are you up to this is the testimony i've seen that's happened through you now for a number of years mm -hmm. and when you're speaking these words of life into people that's where it's coming from it's not coming from theory it's mm -hmm. coming from practice it's coming from testimony and it's now becoming prophecy in the lives and the hearts of people listening mm -hmm. thank you it's um i don't know it's a real challenge to when you do have those times where you do feel like everything's falling apart or it's not going well um i think one of the biggest battles for me in those times is to believe that he's good yeah. Am I going to take the temptation? Am I going to take the bait to believe something about him that's not true? Or am I going to choose that he's here? He wants to parent me as I parent. Um, and that there's something he wants to say. And 
I think I, re- I remember at one point in the whole health journey with our daughter, just kind of having that realization of like, okay, we are in this. We're in it. Like yep. it or not, this is here. Um, what are we going to do? And I remember stopping. I think I've shared this before um, on some of our lives that we've done. I remember stopping at a stop sign and saying, okay, Lord, we're in it. Help me come out of this thing swinging and holding as much as I can grab and hold along the way. Like I want to plunder. I want to take as much as I can from the enemy as he's coming at me. And as he's coming at my family, um, I just didn't want to go down, (laughs) I guess, without a fight. I wanted to, again, take as much as I could. So I think some of it has been also seeing his faithfulness in that. Um, and when there's a lot of pressing and there's a lot of squeezing that that's the time that you need to sit down and write, pull out your pen because the Lord's about to give you a word. He's about to say something. He's about to move. Um, because whenever there's opposition, there's an equal, most of the time, greater amount of grace or revelation or oil or whatever you want to call it. That's also available because God's that good. Hmm. let's go I know we're at that point in time where we put that little CLA marker in <laughs> what we're doing just want to say thanks for hanging out with us in this environment absolutely thanks for anything, having me is there anything else you want to drop on us before we disappear um he's just good <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good year so good <laughs> so good well if people want to get in contact with courtney she's got a new way of doing that oh i do oh the, the web page is that what you're talking about that's what yeah. i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just my name courtney keck k-u-e-c-k uh dot com um or you can always find me on instagram just my name courtney keck yeah. i try to put i try to link as much as i can to uh my facebook page and all of that stuff so yeah Yep. And if you haven't had a chance to have a look at it, uh, you get to see some of the journey, uh, some of the blogging that she's, that Courtney's done. And it's just, you get to listen to the heart of somebody who has discovered God in some pretty challenging places. Yeah. Uh, as always, my friend, thank you for hanging out with us. And for everyone else who's listening, uh, this is the Greater Things podcast and YouTube page. Uh, if you want to support us in a financial capacity, you can click on buy me a coffee and follow the link. And we appreciate everything that flows to us through that. Otherwise, we'll be back on your screens or in your ears soon. Bye for now. <laughs>